Hey guys, Lissy here, and as a storm rages outside my London window, I'm about to play a game called Deep Terror, because why not? Let's just grasp stereotypes by the horns. I don't I don't even know why I'm playing a game called Deep Deep Terror. This is this is me who is not great with horror games. I play games like Alien Isolation from behind the crack in my fingers, behind the sofa. So yeah, I've no idea why I'm doing this for you guys, I guess, because I love you. I've already played the tutorial and actually part of the the first kind of level. You can see that there's, I think there's eight levels in total, if my Roman numerals serve me right. And it's a game based off HP Lovecraft's old horror stories. He wrote way back in the 1920s. I think this particular one is based off a story called Call of Cthulhu. I think that's pronouncing it right, written in 1928. So every time I complete a level, a pentagram is created for each stage that I complete. And I'll explain more why that's happening in a minute. First though, the puzzle mechanics. So you can see here we've got a load of nodes and each node has a different amount of kind of dashes on it that, what, that it's worth, sorry, a numer numerical value. Speak, Alicia, use your words. So I'll start with this one at the bottom, that only needs to be connected to one node. How do I know? Because it's just got one dash. So each kind of dash represents a connection. So if I put that up there, that locks the node. It's had one connection, it's locked. The one that I've connected it to, one of the dashes has grown bigger and the other one's small. That's because I need to connect it a second time. If I connect it a second time, what do you know? There we go, we've got two connections. So. Let's try and connect the rest of them. So I put this one up here, that takes it to two. Go here, that's three. So I've still, this one at the, the bottom left still needs connected. I can't connect it back to any other nodes that have been connected to. I couldn't put these two together again. So if I move that one down, let's move that one there and that one, oh no! Oh, okay, that's not the solution. So now I've run out of nodes. All the other ones are locked and I still need to put three more connections on the top. I'm gonna, I can press this back button that was just in the center of the screen. I'm gonna actually start it the other way around. I'm gonna start with the node that requires the most connections first. I think that's probably the better way to do it. So if connect these two, that's one of the three. Connect that down, that's one of the three. There we go, so we've got the third one. That's locked, that's done, great. This one still needs another. So if we ping that one there, and if we, oh, that one needs a three as well. Maybe like this? Yeah, awesome. So what I've done here is I've drawn a rune. Why am I drawing the rune, you may ask? And I'd say that's a great question. The idea behind this game, as you can probably tell from the really eerie chanting happening in the background, we're trying to connect these nodes, make these runes to raise the gigantic entity that's known as Cthulhu. If you've read H.P. Lovecraft, you'll know that he's a kind of, I mean, his anatomy is a bit mental. He's described as part octopus, part man and part dragon. I kind of like, I feel like that's such an odd mix. His conception would have made for some seriously niche viewing on the dark porn web pub internet thing. I know I probably shouldn't mock him, should I? Because I'm trying to raise him from whatever dark Denzian depths that he's lying in at the moment. In the books, it says, or in the stories, it says that he lies underneath this sub-aquatic city and there's all these cultists that chant and as they chant, they're trying to raise him. And once he's raised, he'll wreak havoc on the known world. So that's what we're trying to do, I think. We're trying to raise him. Yay us. Such a bad idea. Right, so in this one, they're getting they're getting slightly harder as we go. Um and a little just a little bit more complicated. So I think I'm gonna I think it's a good tip to try and connect the ones with the most lines first. So again, I'm gonna try and connect this one that needs three first. Let's go up like that, and then maybe that to there. I'm literally just swiping the screen, so just touch the screen and no, that didn't work. Just um, dragging my finger between the nodes, that creates a line. I think, was that right? I feel like that was right, this bit here. Because now this node setup is sorted. Then maybe this one to here. And then like that. 
Yes, that was right. And it's kind of nice because in some of them, there does seem to be multiple ways to solve the puzzles, which is nice. We've had a few games recently that are puzzle games where you're very much locked into the 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 kind of the way that the developer has decided that the game should be solved and that's quite frustrating because sometimes you actually work out a solution that should work and the game's like nah -uh, that's not the cube we want you to jump through and you're like damn it but I like the idea behind this game I like the idea that you have your phone or your tablet or whatever you're playing this on turns into a kind of incantation book, very cabins in the woods style that you know in movies you'd be like don't stop it stop chanting put down your phone Stop it! Back away! But in this idea, yeah, you're... Ooh! And, okay, so we've, we've come to the end of that particular level. And we have... Chthonian the Sand Demon. Looks like this is this is the particular Denzian that we've raised. So I think we're raising all of Cthulhu's little minions. And then, ultimately, with the main idea of, of the final devil, him, being raised... Flowing tentacles and pulpy grey black elongated sack of a body. Well, that doesn't sound healthy. You need to go to the gym, my friend. All right. And on that note, this is Deep Terror. It's a minimalist puzzler, like I said, inspired by HP Lovecraft's horror stories. It is out on iOS for free right now. And it seems to have no ads either. So it's pretty nice. It's quite a streamlined free to play game. Not particularly invasive. Um, if you want to check it out, let me know in the comment section below what you think of it, how far you got. Have you read HP Lovecraft before? And I will see you guys on the next video. I'm going to go breathe through a paper bag now.